So I actually started as a classroom teacher. Um, I taught early childhood for many years. And then when I got here uh, to the gallery, I sort of was introduced to artful thinking routines. And that process came very naturally as an educator to sort of stop, slow down, really look at works of art together and have meaningful conversations. It's sort of been a very interesting learning process. I struggled a little bit at first, to be perfectly honest. Um, and I think a big part of that reason was because I work with students with varying needs. And I was feeling a little bit restricted by some of the routines. Um, I think until I really sat down and thought about, well, what do my students actually need and what can these routines do for them? And then really started thinking about different ways that I could adapt those routines. So thinking about how to break them down, how to make them into smaller pieces, and even within those smaller pieces, how to facilitate those questions for students who may have you know, trouble processing questions, that may have trouble sort of sitting for 20 minutes to look at a work of art um, and have a long, meaningful conversation. So adding some movement in and really kind of deconstructing some of those routines to make them adaptable for everyone. And once I started doing that, I had a lot more success with them in the galleries. The other thing that I like to do is I just really break down that C. I give them three lines. Sometimes if you say, just what do you see? That's an overwhelming question, right? What do you want me to look at? It could go anywhere. Um, so just sort of what do you see and then three lines helps students understand, okay, I just need to write three things. And that's a lot less intimidating than sort of a whole blank page. Anytime I'm planning any lesson, I sort of start with what's going to be the most fun, right? I really want the students to feel invested. Everything from which works of art I choose. I chose this work of art today because it's big, it's colorful, it's fun, it's interesting. It doesn't look like a lot of other works of art in the gallery. I want it to seem accessible to them and I want them to have a good time. So anytime I can make anything into a game, I do, right? And so instead of just saying like, okay, we're gonna get out, we're gonna fill out all these questions, the second you just take those questions and put them in a jar, suddenly you've got yourself a game, right? I've done the same thing, just sort of filling out a sheet of paper and kids get like one, maybe two questions. If you notice, I didn't have any question prompts left. They wanted to do two, three, they probably would have done 10 to 20 questions if I had let them, right? I also do that from sort of an adaptation perspective because it helps students focus on one thing at a time. Some students, if you have 10 questions listed on a page, it's automatically overwhelming and they can shut down. So by giving those sort of strips of paper one at a time, it really helps students focus in on what they're doing, um, really think about that question before moving on to the next question. So it sort of serves a lot of different purposes for doing it that way. Any time that I can involve tactile things in the gallery, in the gallery, of course, it's hard, you're limited. In the classroom, you could go crazy and really even expand that further, you know, bring in paint, right? Have them experiment. But here, some learners are tactile, right? They wanna to touch things, they wanna figure it out. So I wanna to try to give them that opportunity to manipulate materials to really think like an artist in that way. So I think that pairing of sort of generating questions and then having tactile experiences to help investigate those questions is really valuable.